we often think of Paul as just this spiritual giant, and he's all by himself, and he's just going through the Roman world, and he's planting churches, and then he's, he's routing the philosophers in Athens, and then he's writing off the most profound letters in the world, and then he's there, and he's getting stones thrown at him, and then he scoffs at it, and then he gets whipped and flogged, then he gets on another ship, and everyone gets off the ship. We said, you get on this thing, it's going to sink, Paul. And he goes, and he gets shipwrecked again, and he's on an island, and snakes bite him. He says, ah, that's nothing, and he throws off the snake, and he's just a one-man superhero. Well, you know what Paul talks about in his letters? If I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in my weakness. I'm going to boast in all the ways that I struggle. I'm going to boast in all the things that, that I'm not good at. Some of you are, are scared and you're timid in life. You're timid about ministry God is calling to you, timid about conversations you need to have. And you just you, you go through life and you feel weak all the time. And you're saying, what do I do so I can feel strong? Maybe God is saying, I don't want you to feel strong. I want you to boast in your weakness, like Paul. Paul's not doing this by himself. He's, he's constantly has people around him. He has a team. There's a reason. There's a reason that when Jesus sends out the 70 or the 72 disciples, he sends them out in pairs because you're not meant to do this by yourself. Listen, if you want a ministry to be short-lived, start it by yourself, do it by yourself, and share authority with no one but yourself. And if you're really gifted and dynamic, you're going to see something, and it's going to grow up for a time, and people will flock to it because you've got a lot of gifts, and then it'll be done. Because you didn't build a team. You didn't invest in others. This often happens with churches when they're thinking of, of youth ministry. Do we get the guy who's like, charisma on Holy Spirit steroids and just, man, and he knows everything and he's like, oh, yeah, I, saw, I, read, you know, I read all the Hunger Games and no, oh, I read The Hobbit and then, oh, I read and he just knows everything about everything and the kids just, wow, this guy's so cool. The things I mentioned probably aren't even cool because I'm not cool, but this guy is and he knows everything. Well, you want the person who's going to be faithful and who's going to teach and going to set an example and who's going to build into parents and build into others and build up a team and not be the one-man show. How do you do ministry? Paul said in 2 Timothy 2, what you have heard from me in the presence of many others, in trust of faithful men who will then be able to teach even more. That's what you do. You heard me say it. I want you to teach other people so they go on they can teach other people. A huge part of ministry is constantly training up others, releasing others, empowering others so that they can replicate what you do or replace you when you're done. In whatever ministry you're doing, I want you to think about that. So you got Bible study, you got a, a youth group, you have counseling, just maybe informal conversations you have with people. What are you doing right now that there's people around you, whether you're just 20 and you're starting out or you're, you know, 80 and your ship is, uh, you know, going to get into port soon, whatever end of the spectrum, do you have people around you? You're building up so that they can replicate what you're doing, okay? They can multiply it. They do what you do. Wow, he can counsel. Wow, she can do that. Wow, she can pray for people. They replicate what you do, and they can replace you. And Do you release people? That's, that's the hard part sometimes, whether it's students or kids or ministry. Just release, okay, now you go. And because you want to look and you, and you look and you see, no, 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 that, that's not, I would have done it that way. And you're right. And then you think about your kids or your, your person you're mentoring, whoever you think, I, I, I would do that better. And you would. But you can either try to run somebody else's life or you can have the Holy Spirit. God isn't calling you to be the Holy Spirit for everyone in your life because you can't be everywhere and you can't change a heart. 